Hi, it's Mr. T here, and today I'm just going to introduce the organic chemistry. So this is our first organic chemistry lesson that we're going to do at level two for NCEA. Um, and it's a good start for uh, anybody who's just starting out with organic chemistry and needs an introduction. So in particular in this video, we're going to look at how we name alkanes as well, give, give uh, just an introduction to organic chemistry. Okay, organic chemistry, what is it? It's the study of molecules or compounds that contain the carbon atom. Now it actually excludes uh, things like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and carbonates, but any other molecule that contains carbon compounds that will be included in organic chemistry. Now that leaves quite a few different molecules that might be in this topic. So we have molecules like dopamine, which is a, a molecule that we have in our blood, as, or a, um, I guess a molecule that causes pleasure when it hits our brain, our receptors in our brain. We have serotonin, which is another uh, molecule in our body, and it contains a lot of carbon atoms. So these simplified pictures here, actually every point that two lines meet is a carbon atom, and they're just not showing them. So this is lots of carbon atoms um, producing a big framework with some other atoms on them. Uh, then we have a molecule like adrenaline that's also found in our body and caffeine that sometimes people take as a stimulant. So these are all organic molecules. And in fact, we think about something like sugar. Sugar is an organic molecule. Ethanol or alcohol is an organic molecule. A lot of things that we have around us are organic molecules because we're, we're all organic beings and so are the animals and the plants around us. Another big place that we get organic, organic molecules from are oil, coal and gas. And that's because the plants and animals that contain all these organic molecules are the very thing that make up coal, gas and oil. They are ancient plants and animals that have been fossilised and, and they have been put under heat and pressure until the, the nature of these molecules change into things, mostly hydrocarbons, in coal, gas, uh, and oil. Anyway, yeah, we know about seven million organic compounds, um, and people are in the process of identifying new ones every year. They can use them for new drugs, or they can use them um, as new chemicals you might use for new solutions for a surface to put on your cell phone uh, to uh, something that might clean your drain better. Now the reason why they're all carbon based is because carbon has a specific property. Now it's a property that you can take one carbon atom and join another carbon atom to it, and then another one after that, and you can you can produce these very long chains of carbon atoms. And that ability is called catenation. And not even chains, you can actually, once you've made a chain of carbon atoms, you can start to build them up ways and down ways. So you can make like big webs of carbon atoms. So this ability, this catenation, is what makes, gives us so many organic molecules, so many different versions of carbon molecules, because carbon can join together in so many different ways. To make it even more, uh, to give more flavor to it, if we make some skeletons or, or backbones of carbon, we can then add other atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, chlorine, etc. And we can stick those on specific parts and we can make individually different molecules that have different properties than a molecule that might have had a different combination of carbon atoms and different molecules. So this is what is so amazing about carbon and organic chemistry. The other thing that carbon atoms can do is as well as forming just what we call single bonds, they can form double bonds and triple bonds easily. And they form them with themselves and with other elements. And we'll see some examples of those as we go through this topic. So here's an example of a chain of carbon atoms. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon atoms, but they're not arranged in a straight line. We've got a straight line of five and then one coming up here and some coming down here. And then we've got lots of extra atoms added to it. They're all hydrogens, by the way. This is a hydrocarbon. One thing to notice about carbons, because a carbon atom has four valence electrons in its outside shell, it can form four covalent bonds at once. 
So whenever we draw organic molecules, we're always on the lookout to make sure that we have formed four bonds to every carbon atom, because every carbon atom will have four bonds. Also, every hydrogen just has, only has one bond. So here's another molecule. This is a wee bit different. This has the carbon as its backbone, but it's got some other atoms added in here. Now, these other atoms give it essentially a flavor or gives it properties that are similar. So here on the left here, we've got a, a double bond oxygen and an OH here. Now, this produces something called a carboxylic acid functional group, and it makes it an acidic part of this molecule, and it acts like an acid. On the right here, we have an N, and this is an amine functional group with an NH2. Now this acts like a base on this end. So this gives this molecule, it's, it's, it's kind of um, a really interesting way of it working. It's got an acid on one side and a base on the other, and this is actually called an amino acid. And this is a building block for um, making proteins. So that these parts here that give it the flavor that are different than just ordinary hydrogens and carbons are called functional groups. And organic compounds are classified based on the functional groups that they have. So the first, um, I guess the simplest part group is the group that contains no functional groups and only has single bonds. Now these are called alkanes. So alkanes only contain carbons and hydrogens that only have single covalent bonds. Now because all of their, hmm, they're called saturated hydrocarbons. And what that means is we'll see that later when we look at the unsaturated ones, but we can't add anything more to them. Now, they have this general formula called CNH bracket 2N plus 2. Now, what this means as a formula is if I was to take, uh, say, I wanted to work out what the general formula is for the molecule that has two carbons, the formula would be C2 H 2 times 2 plus 2 H 6 C 2 H 6 if it was the carbon that had 3 it would be C 3 H 8 so we get this pattern the most simple type of organic compounds are the ones that we call uh, linear alkanes or the ones where the alkanes are just in a straight line so the most the, the six most simplest linear alkanes are the ones that have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons. Now they all have the same pattern of formula. And if you went back to the um, formula I had in the previous slide, you'd see that uh, the N, sorry, you'd see that you'll get CH4, C2H6, C3H8 when you use that um, this number here as N in the formula. Now, what happens is we have our own specific name for when naming a compound to denote how many carbons it has. So a methane always has one carbon, an ethane always has two, propane, three, butane, four, pentane, five, hexane, six. Now, pentane and hexane are, are maybe some uh, common names, or so we've heard that name before, a pentagram, a hexagon, so in geometry. The first four, though, it's quite important to remember the order and their names so that we can draw the structural formulas for each one of these. So here is the one for methane, ethane. Notice, notice each carbon has four bonds and then um, we we'll draw them all in line. There's propane, there's butane, there's pentane and there's hexane. So those are the six most simple organic compounds that are all linear alkanes, and that's their names. Because we're going to have to remember the names of all of the organic compounds or come up with a method to work it out. So the next wee step we're going to go over is what are the methods to work out the names if someone gives us an organic compound? Okay, so let's look how we're going to name... Um, more complex organic compounds. And specifically here, we're only gonna look at alkanes. But when you look at some of the alkanes, here's one here, you can see it's more complex. It doesn't just have five or six carbons in a line, and it's got like eight carbons, but they're not in a straight line. So how do I go about naming it? Maybe if it's just eight carbons, I could call it octane. 
But if that was octane, what would 8 in a straight line be called? That would also be called octane, but they would look different. They're different things. So I actually have to come up with a specific way to name this that gives it a unique name. So this is how we do it. First step is we work out whether it has any special functional groups to it. Does it have an O? Does it, ha does it have an N? Does it have an S? Does it have a double bond? No, it has none of those things. It only has carbons and hydrogens and only single bonds. So the end of its name is going to be ane. So it's going to be something ane. Now that tells us whenever we see the ane on the end of something that it's only carbons and hydrogens in the molecule. The second step. What we want to do is identify the longest continuous chain of carbons in this molecule. Now if, you, if I went along the horizontal here, one, two, three, four, five, you might think that the longest chain was five in this molecule, but that's not correct. The longest chain is that one there, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six carbons in our longest chain. This is our main chain. So what we're going to do is the basis of this name, or the main part of the name, the surname if you would say, is going to be six. And if we look here, six is hex. So we're going to have a main part of this name is hexane. So this is a hexane molecule apart from it has some other bits coming off it. Okay, so let's continue naming this molecule here. So <clears throat> now we've found the main chain and we know that the, it's called hexane, that's the parent part of the name. We specifically um, want to look at these parts here, these two parts. Now these are called the branches, okay? Or we can sometimes call them substituents. So these are the branches that come off the main chain. So you, if you can think of the main chain as the main road, and these are the houses that come off the main road, I want to know the numbers of their address in order to be able to name this molecule correctly. Now if I want to give a number to this road, there's two ways I can number it. I can go from the bottom here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or I can go from the right. If I go from the bottom, this has the number 3 and this has the number 5. If I go from the right, this is the number 2 and this is the number 4. The way that we number things in organic chemistry, we give the number that is the smallest possible number. So we're going to number this main chain from the right. And that way, this gets the number of 2 and that gets the number of 4. The next thing we have to look at is these groups here, is we need to find a name for them. So we actually have to, we know that the main name is hexane, but we have to go number 2 and then its name and then number 4 and its name. So let's have a look. Here are some branch names for what we call alkane branches. The simplest one is called methyl. So that is a methyl branch. So notice that this is a methyl branch. Actually, this one here, CH3, is a methyl branch too. It's just another way of writing it. However, we could have had something called an ethyl branch that has two carbons. That's what eth means, two carbons. Or we could have had a propyl branch, three carbons. In this case, we have two branches that are methyls. So if I want to name this, I would just go, it says the branches are named first with the number of the branch position on the longest chain preceding it. So what we do is we go 2 methyl, comma, 4 methyl hexane. So this could be my answer. This is a correct way of writing it. However, it's bad form. We don't usually do it this way. And the reason we don't do it this way, see how this says methyl and it's methyl? So we write the same word twice. Well, chemists hate doing extra work. They always want to find an easy way around. So instead of doing the methyl twice, what we do is whenever we have two groups that are identical, these two methyl groups, we just put, or if we had three or four, we put a, we suffix, a prefix in front. In this case, we put the word or the we prefix di. So we go 2, 4, di, meaning 2, methyl hexane. And that's how we name that. Well, let's have just have a look at another couple. So here's one here, 
I've already put the longest chain in and I've numbered the way that I think that it should be. Now you see I would make this one go backwards so that this is a 2 and this is a 4. The same reason I did it last time because if I went from the bottom this would be a 3 and that would be a 5. Now can you remember what this group was? So remember this one was a methyl group. This has 2 in its branch so this is called an ethyl group. So this is still a hexane. So this is now going to be 2-methyl-4-ethyl-hexane. Oh, and if I'd only put those in the right order, 2-ethyl-4-ethyl-2-methyl-hexane. Uh, yeah, right. So why did I put the 4 before the 2? The reason that I put it round this way is I wrote them in alphabetical order. See, I write these groups, the branches coming off in alphabetical order. If I did this one again, well, this is the one we just had before. Okay, so it's still hexane, but see, I've drawn this all condensed up like this. So this is 2,4-dimethylhexane. Okay, so now, just before we go, we're going to go into another concept that is quite tricky. So you might want to stop here and practice some of your numbering in your book. But um, here's a bit about isomers. So isomers are different ways of arranging the same atoms. So they are all called constitutional or structural isomers. You can use either of those names. So for example, imagine we had a molecule called, well, with the formula of four carbons and 10 hydrogens. You'll go, oh yeah, I know that one. That was from before. That's butane. It is butane, but only if it's in a chain. Can we arrange this molecule in another way? And part of what we need to be able to do is if someone gives us a molecular formula, we need to be able to work out what are all the possible ways that we could arrange it. So I have a set of rules that I usually follow to do this. The first thing I do is I draw all the possible um, versions. So I would, in sorry, the longest chain to, to draw all the possible versions. So what does that mean? Let's have a First thing, I start one, two, three, four. Well, that's the only version I can have of having four in a row. Then I'm going to start drawing versions with three in a row. One, two, three, but coming off the first one. Okay, so see these are two. I've drawn these two different ones. To do it quickly, I don't draw the hydrogens in. I just draw the skeleton. Then I draw one, two, three, and then I draw a version of that. And then I draw one, two, three, and a version of that. I can't actually draw two because it... It just gets too small. So these are four possibilities that could be different versions of this. Now the problem with this is the first two are actually the same thing. Because each this carbon here, each of the bonds around this carbon can actually rotate. They can rotate 360 degrees. Now what that means is this is what the actual molecule looks like if I was to draw the atoms and the bonds coming off. So these blue molecules here are the carbons and the white ones are hydrogens. Now you can see that this one here is not an actual straight line. It is if I look from the top, but it's really a zigzag shape. And you can see the next one, well all that's happened is this is just twisted around a bit. See it just twisted at this point here. So it's actually looking like this. Now the reason this happens is because all each of these carbon bonds has four bonds and it's a tetrahedral shape there's a 109 degree angle and they're able to turn so this molecule and this molecule are the same molecule so i can't really draw them both twice let's have a look at this one this molecule here is it's completely different than this one because with the longest chain is three and the longest chain here is four and there's one coming off the middle so we can see it has to be different because it now has a longest chain of three, so it must be a propane where this is a butane. The second one, however, if we look, if we just flip this up the other way, these two are identical. So I can get rid of this one because it's just another version of this. And I can get rid of this one because it's just another version of this. So now I have my two constitutional isomers for this molecular formula. <coughs> And here they are. Here's the first one. I've drawn all the hydrogens on it. Now I've worked out what it is, and I do it for the second one. Now to be sure that these are actually 
um, individually different molecules, I go ahead and name them. This has four carbons in a row, so it's called butane. This has three in a row with a methyl branch off the middle of the second one. So this is 2-methylpropane or methylpropane. You can use either name. Okay, so I said earlier on that I'd talk about this condensed structural formula. So hopefully now we've seen some of these structural formulas where every carbon has four bonds coming off and, and the hydrogens are usually around the outside. That can be quite cumbersome and take a, long a lot of time, a lot of uh, space when you draw these. So sometimes we condense them to look like this. And how we condense them is every single carbon in the main chain is drawn with the atoms that are attached to it to its right. So here we have CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. For this one here, it gets a bit harder, but CH3 would be the first part. And then the second part here, CH, and then the CH3 that is on the branch here, because it's together as a as a substituent group or as a branch coming off, we put it in brackets. So you can see here, this corresponds to this one. CH, CH3. The next part is CH, and then we have CH3 here. Oh, sorry, two CH3s in brackets, and then we have CH2, CH3. This one at the bottom here, the, another thing that we can do with these long, long chains is we can take, we have one, two, three, four things that are identical in the middle, four CH2s. So I just put them in a bracket and put a four here. Now don't worry about these condensed structural formulas. I recommend you just go back and look at this um, when you are confused about them. But over time, you will start to see what is the structural formula on the right as the thing, sorry, on the left, as the thing on the right. You'll see them as the same thing. You'll be able to take a condensed structural formula and draw it as a structural formula, or the other way around. Okay, well, I hope this has uh, helped and this has given you an introduction to organic chemistry, and uh, look out for the next video.